Welcome to Liesl's Artistic Studio. I'm so glad you're joining me today because this tutorial may just help you be able to create a stunning piece of artwork that you may have never thought possible. For my supplies today, I have watercolor paper with a penciled outline that I will go over in more detail in just a minute, some water, watercolor paints, a paper towel, and some brushes. I have two round brushes today, a number eight and a number three. Then lastly, I have some masking fluid, which is optional, but it does make the painting process a bit easier. Now, while I tape my paper down with some artist tape, let me go over some details about this outline for this piece. Now, I often show step-by-step -step how to draw the outlines as well as sell them on my Etsy shop. But because I haven't taken the time to actually show how to draw this particular piece, I have decided to have a huge sale for my Etsy shop. This outline, as well as any other outlines that I have sold from the past, will be placed at a discount price, meaning that everything in my Etsy shop will be on sale for the next week, starting today, April 18th, 2024, and lasting for one week only. So if there are any outlines that you have thought about purchasing but haven't yet, now is the time. I'll leave a link for the supplies you see me using today, my Etsy shop link, along with a short video that can help you with purchasing and downloading Etsy digital downloads in the description of this video if you're interested. Now, after we've got our outlines traced onto the watercolor paper lightly with a pencil using a light table or even just a well-lit window in your house, we are ready to get started. Now, if you have some masking fluid handy that you can use today, the first thing we need to do is mask off the centers of these open flowers. I've got an old brush for this part that I'll be using today. I have put a little bit of dish soap in the bristles of this old brush of mine to clean out that masking fluid later. I've ruined a brush or two before I learned that trick, so I definitely recommend that. Then I'll just dab the fluid on almost in dot shapes to cover up the stamen area of each flower. I'll go clean out the masking fluid out of this brush really quickly, and then while we let the fluid dry on our page, let's take the number eight and mix up a few colors on our tray. Now, I'm in the mood to paint this bright and happy colors today, so I'm choosing some quinacridone rose. I'll actually make two spots for this color. You'll see why in just a minute. Then I'll take some cadmium orange and mix in just a touch of gamboge to make it a nice, rich yellow-orange color. Then I'll take some sap green and mix it with some of the quinacridone rose that I already have here on my tray, creating more of a brownish green color. Now, not too brown though. If you feel like it's too brown, keep adding more of that sap green. And then maybe I'll have a little spot with just some pure gamboge color. Now, my masking fluid still isn't quite dry yet, so let's start painting the buds first, and then we'll move on to the larger flowers later. I'll use the wet on wet technique to paint the majority of this piece today, meaning that I will wet down the section I'd like to paint with just water first, and then while it's still wet, I'll start applying in the color. Let's try using the yellow orange as sort of a base color, and then we'll add in some of the pink as an accent. Now, as I move on to the second half of this bud, I'll paint it in a similar way. I'm not waiting until the first section is fully dry. I guess I don't mind if it bleeds together a little bit, but if you'd rather keep your edges more crisp and clean, you can either wait until that first section is dry, or I think I'm actually gonna try out another way on the next bud that I paint, where I leave a small sliver of white paper that's unpainted with water or color, creating kind of a barrier between the two sections. We'll try that in just a minute and see if we like it. You'll notice I did paint the second section with more pigment and color though, so it is slightly darker in value, which is what helps separate it slightly from the first. 
Now I'll go ahead and switch over to the smaller brush and paint in the greenery that's attached to the bud using the sap green and quinacridone rose mixture. Now I haven't painted water on this portion first. I'm just putting the paint straight on here, wet on dry. And again, I'm doing this while the previous paint is still a little bit damp, so the green may blend or bleed a little bit, but that's kind of the look I'm looking for. Let's go ahead and paint the second bud in a similar way as the first, but this time I am going to try leaving a sliver of dry or white paper that's going to separate the two sections of this bud. Well, I don't know about you, but I kind of like that little sliver of white in here. I'll probably use that technique a few more times throughout this painting. I'll just continue on now and paint all of the rest of the buds in a similar way, and I may adjust the orange and pink ratio a little bit here and there just to give them some variety, meaning that sometimes I'll paint with a little bit less pink or a little more pink accent. Now, I didn't choose to do a background color on this particular piece, but I know some of you do enjoy adding a background wash. So if I were to do a background wash behind these flowers, I think a yellow would look really nice with this, or maybe even a yellow with some splashes of orange here and there. Just the thought if you'd like to give that a try in your painting. If you enjoy my painting style and are finding my tutorials helpful, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss out on any new and upcoming tutorials that I put out every week.
as I'm finishing off this bit of greenery on this bud, I think I'll go ahead and paint in the rest of the greenery throughout the page. I have a few just small little hints of leaf tips poking out here and there that I'll just paint a nice pure green. And then as I move on to the larger leaves, I think I'll paint them more of a two-toned color. So I'll use a little bit of this yellow and paint that on here after I've got the wet wash of water. And then I'll blend in some of the green color. Now I'm going to go ahead and leave a strip of white for the center of this leaf, sort of like I did on some of the buds. But if you'd rather, you can paint that center vein line over with some dark green after this is dry instead. Now that these larger leaves are done, I might as well go ahead and paint the green stems to the larger flowers as well, and then we'll be done with all of the green and any background sections, so all we have left to do is paint the three main larger flowers. I'll use this larger number eight to paint this area with. I'll again use the wet on wet technique like we've been doing already, painting most of the area with water, but maybe leaving a small spot or two without any water that can be a white spot on the petal later. I'll add in the orange next that can serve as the base color flowing through the water that we just placed in. And then I'll add in the pink as an accent or even a shadow color to each petal. I'm really focusing a darker, more concentrated color nearer to the center area of the flower. I'll skip this next petal until the first one is dry and jump to the next so that my petals don't start blending together. But let's change this one up a little bit and see what happens if we paint the base color of the petal with some pink instead of the orange first, and then we'll use the orange as the accent color. If you didn't paint on some of the masking fluid to mask off the centers of these flowers in the beginning, you'll just need to take greater care in painting around this center section. Well, that was kind of fun to change up the dominant color there. At this point, I'm just going to continue jumping around and painting each petal until they are all complete. This is the point where you can use your creative senses a little bit, mix and match, blend and design the pinks and the oranges onto these petals in any way you'd like to try. I think I'll have some with the orange more dominant and some with the pink more dominant and some that are a little lighter or some that are darker in value. I really just am trying to make each petal its own while still creating a cohesive scheme. I think the best part about this piece is that it looks very tricky and complicated, but when you break it down and focus on one little section at a time, you really are just doing the same technique over and over again, and before you know it, you have a lovely piece of artwork to show off that people will be stunned by. Something else I like about making a piece like this is that you can take breaks or walk away from it if you need to for a while. Because it can be broken down into sections, it's really not super time sensitive. So let's sit back and enjoy the painting process. I've just composed a brand new piece of music that I recorded just the other day. I'll play that for you in the background. And if you don't enjoy listening to the music portion, please feel free to turn the sound off and just paint in the quiet and peaceful solitude.
this is going pretty well so far. I've got a few more left to go here, but I'll point out that my water is getting pretty tainted at this point. So I'm going to quickly switch this out for some fresh water, then we'll continue on with the last few petals and then move on to the finishing touch of this piece, which will be the centers of the flowers. All right, well done. We're ready for the final step here. So once as your painting is completely dry, and that is key here so that we don't smear or smudge something after all of that work. When it is dry, then let's take off the masking fluid at the centers of the flowers by rubbing it with either your fingers or using an eraser. In fact, while I've got the eraser out, I'm going to go ahead and see if I can erase or lighten up some of the leftover and visible pencil lines that are here as well. Now for the centers of the flowers, I've got to make a choice. I can paint them either lighter in value than the petals or darker in value than the petals. Either way I choose, I just want them to stand out and be apart from the petals so they don't get lost. I think I'm gonna try darker today, but please feel free to choose whatever you would like. If I did lighter, I would probably use some yellow with maybe some spots of orange near the bottom. But since I'm going to go with the darker, I do need to mix up some darker colors here. So let's try some alizarin crimson, and I might even mix it near the sap green mixture so some of the green blends in just a little bit as well. Then I'll make a darker red orange by mixing some cadmium orange with some alizarin crimson. Using this smaller brush, I'll make some spots of this orange at the tops of the center area, and in fact, I feel like I also might add in some yellow to fill in some of the gaps as well. Now I'll use the alizarin crimson and paint spots of that color near the bottom area of each flower center. I'm not sure that I like the tops of these as dark as they are, so I'm going to try lifting out some of this color by wetting the top half down with some water, maybe even scrubbing it a little bit with my brush bristles, and then I'll use a paper towel to lift and dab out that water. This is just going to lighten and smooth this area just a little bit. I am really liking this greater contrast in values here, so I'm actually going to take it even one step further. I'll use a touch of ivory black and paint a few dots of that color at the bottom area of the center part of the flower. Of course, this is optional. You choose what you feel like your painting needs. And that's it for these lovely and striking pink and orange flowers. I hope you feel proud of the vibrant piece that you were able to create today. But more importantly, I hope you had fun doing it. Thanks so much for watching. If you did enjoy this tutorial, 
please consider subscribing to my channel so I can continue to help you discover your artistic side.